yeah, yeah. I was asked my opinion about um, the situation up at Ibrox at the moment, and I offered my thoughts on the um, requirements that I believe are, are needed to be the CEO of a club of that stature. Um, obviously, a club of Rangers. I've been in football 30 years now, Keith, and they are a, a huge club, a football institution with a global fan base. And, you know, I, I, of course, I would be always happy to have a conversation if they wanted to have a conversation with me. Mm -hmm. If that takes us anywhere, that's a different set of circumstances. And I, I also, it's important for myself to be extremely respectful to the people in office at Ibrox as well. You know, I, I, I'm not trying to call anything on with them, um, but would I be willing to have a conversation with them? Of course I would. Have you reached out to them, Adrian, in any way? Look, I, I, I do know one or two people in and around um, Rangers. Um, I made some initial contact quite some time ago now, but I've not had any dialogue with Rangers with regards to, or from Rangers with regards to this position. Right, OK. I mean, it's interesting. My information is that there might have been a, an initial reluctance on the Rangers side because of a previous encounter that, that you had. And I, I find this an odd one because I think you, you were helping to introduce the American lady, Kylie Fox, a potential investor, into a discussion with Rangers. Um, I thought Rangers, for some reason, treated the whole thing in a very hostile manner when, in fact, what you'd found there was a woman that was willing to invest in the region of £60 million into Rangers. Now, I have to tell you, Adrian, if day one in the role as chief executive, someone was able to bring in an investor with £60 million, I think that's not a bad start. It's not a first, first day at the office. <laughs> well, I mean, what I would say there, Keith, is, look, from, from <laughs> anything that's gone on historically, um, has always been done with the best of intentions on my part. Yeah. And, you know, one thing I'm, I've never been involved in is introducing anybody to any football club um, in a hostile manner. Yeah. You know, everything that I would do would always be um, worked in a professional way. I'm, I'm, I'm very big on building relationships and dealing with things in a calm and considered manner, wherever mm -hmm. possible. Um, the, 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 the situation that you're talking about two years ago, uh, my role there was um, very much the person who uh, was, was, was introducing one or two people um, because... Uh, this, 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 this lady in particular was looking uh, to bring investment into uh, the European football market. Yeah. And these conversations happen with football clubs all over the world on a frequent basis. Um, so, look, that, that, that ship has long since sailed as far as I'm aware, and I'm, I've, I've no, no direct involvement in um, a relationship with, with, with the person concerned. Um, this is a very different set of circumstances. Um, it's not for me to say uh, what anyone on the board at Rangers Football Club actually wants at this moment. What I would say is for a club of the stature that it is, um, with the, you know, the, the passionate fan base that it has, um, whichever direction they choose to go in, it's a huge job. And whoever comes in has to have a real good understanding of the industry. Uh, mm -hmm. they, must, they must, you know, have a good... Uh, football intelligence, business intelligence, and importantly, have a really strong um, network of people both in the UK, in Scotland, obviously, but also internationally as well, I would suggest. Yeah. And it's funny because I'll quote you from, you mentioned a previous interview, Rangers Football Club should be able to attract someone who has the stature and the ability to lead from the front, but also have a real good understanding of how the industry works and a great network of contacts and relationships with people right throughout the game in Scotland, but also at UEFA, the European Club Association. There are people within Celtic who have those relationships already and Rangers should be expecting similar. Adrian, you're absolutely spot on in everything you said there, but it does sound to me as if you might be describing yourself. <laughs> Look, there are, there, Keith, there, are, there, are, there, are, there are a lot of... Um, there are a lot of people out there who have that level of expertise uh, within the football industry, who have a really good network across the European uh, football community. You know, the, the, it's just really important, in my opinion, for um, 
a club like Rangers, um, when you when you compare Rangers, you know, to Celtic at the moment, who are going very well, um, they're also very well represented in the, in, in the European Club Association, as one example. Um, and I think the you know the, the ultimate aim for Rangers is to be um, certainly at the top table of every big organisation. And you know you, you're asking about myself there, and um, I, I don't want to come across as someone who is talking myself up too much. It's not really what. Yeah, I want. no, no, no. Listen, we contacted you just to make that clear. <laughs> so I, you know, obviously, I I do have a lot of contacts across the game. Um, mm-hmm. I was I, I was. Uh, a previous consultant for UEFA when I ran my own company many years ago. Uh, I was a member of the UEFA media committee at one point in time. And obviously I've, I've got a, you know, just because of my longstanding industry relationships, I've got a, a strong network there. But importantly, I think what people wouldn't necessarily understand and appreciate with myself is that from uh, a Scottish point of view, I've, I've been coming to football in Scotland for many, many years mm-hmm. and I watch the game frequently. And during that time, I've, I've built up quite a good stable of uh, contacts across the across the game there, whether they be people at the very uh, top positions in football clubs or coaches, um, journalists, um, agents. You know, I've, I've managed, I make it my business wherever I go in the world that I've got a good network because that's how things get done. Yeah. In life, generally. Yeah. And, and one last thing, Aidan, and I'll let you get back to the beach. Um, I mean, what, what, what is the, the sort of image down south of, of you know, how Rangers have handled things over the last while? Because, as you say, Celtic seem to be, you know, streets ahead off the pitch just now as well as on it. Um, is there a feeling that, that it needs to be modernised a little bit, streamlined, um, and just made I, I, to be I, a little bit more professional? I, I don't think um, outside of Scotland that you find that Rangers are micro-analysed to the yeah, granular level true. that, that takes place in, in <laughs> Scotland and in particular in Glasgow. But for me, that's that's, that's part of the beauty of it. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, the passion and, and the, you know, the the whole, you know, the, 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 the scrutiny, the, the discussion, the debate is part of it. I, I think what you would say is if you if you discussed it with a lot of people, um, in in England, people are aware at the moment, obviously, that Celtic are uh, performing more successfully than Rangers on the pitch. Mm-hmm. They may be aware of the issues around um, Ibrox and having to play at Hamden. Obviously, uh, being knocked out of European club competition by Dynamo Kiev. Uh, but in the main, they still still see and appreciate Rangers for being this unbelievably big football club that is, you know, historically so successful. And people's memories, you know, obviously I can't account for everyone uh, who are maybe a bit younger than me, but people remember in, you know, it's not that long ago, apart from the recent uh, Europa final, uh, people remember the final in Manchester, they remember the, you know, the great teams of Laudrup and Gascoigne and people like that, you know, Rangers are still a great big football club. Mm -hmm. Oh, brilliant. Adrian, listen, I won't keep you any longer, but uh, who knows, maybe you and I can catch up for a coffee in Glasgow sometime soon. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll treat you to that, Keith. Don't worry about that. 